Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Westworld, Season 4. Remember, at the end of Season 3, Dolores sacrificed herself so Maeve and Caleb could destroy Rehoboam, the super AI controlling the whole world, and make a free new planet for hosts and humans. But right off the bat in Season 4, Dolores is back! Except she's going by Christina and living in a near future New York. She seems to be living a rom-com lifestyle where her roommate keeps setting her up on a series of bad blind dates. She works as a writer on a video game where she's in charge of the stories of the background characters. But one day this guy tracks her down like you ruined my life by writing my story and it ends with him killing himself. So who, what, when, where, why, and how Christina is, we'll find out later. Now the main story begins with Caleb, seven years after he and Maeve destroyed her hoboam, and it's a nice happy world now. He's got a hot wife and a beautiful daughter, Frankie. Maeve has been living quietly off the grid, but but one day some bad guys track her down and she's got to go back into murder mode. They're coming after Caleb too, but just in time his old friend Katana Maeve shows up like, hey darling, time for another adventure. They discover a lot of VIPs have been replaced by robots, and the mastermind is evil Dolores Charlotte Hale. Yes, remember, at the end of season three, the car explosion killed her family and pushed her to the dark side. She doesn't want to coexist with humans, she wants to rule them, and to that end she created a robot William the Man in Black. But she's actually keeping the human William alive just so she can taunt him. Through him, as the owner of Delos, she's consolidating power. She even brought back Clementine to be his executive assistant. So Caleb and Maeve infiltrate the fancy party to find out what they're up to, but turns out they're on a train headed to, yes, another Westworld. Yes, they're opening a new park, but we've already done the cowboy thing. This one's set in Prohibition-era Chicago. They did just reuse all the old Westworld loops, though, so it's a fun deja vu in a slightly new setting. Meanwhile, it's time to check in with Bernard. Remember, at the end of Season 3, he plugged himself into the Sublime, the virtual world where all the old Westworld hosts were beamed to. Here he meets with one of our old friends who's like, yeah, man, the Sublime is awesome. We've all just made our perfect paradise worlds. But Bernard's not here to stay. He's on a mission to save the world. So he uses the Sublime to run a simulation of uh, infinite variations of the real world, and he discovers that it always ends in mass extinction. Much like Doctor Strange, there is one way that he can save it. This took a few years, but now Bernard wakes up from his nap, and we find the answer to a huge mystery. Stubbs got himself out of the tub. And once again, these two best friends are off on a bro road trip to save the world. Bernard has lived all these possible futures, though, so he's doing the whole thing where it's like, don't get the pastrami, get the tuna, trust me. Pretty soon, though, he hitches a ride from this cool rebel chick. He shows him a maze like, yo, we're friends. She doesn't trust him, but he's like, hey, I know you're looking for a super weapon in the desert. I know where to dig. Over in Gangster World, pretty soon, Maven and Caleb infiltrate the control center, but what's this? Fake Dolores leading a robot uprising. It's not real, though. It's part of the game. They programmed in the Westworld Massacre so guests can have a thrill. Finally, they get to the real control room where they're doing some strange experiments with flies. And they've got this weird tower that emits creepy tones below the level of human hearing, yes, turns out they're controlling humans. And bad news for Caleb, they captured his daughter Frankie, so he runs in to save her just in time. But that's not Frankie, it's a robot copy. This was a trap. She opens her mouth and flies fly out. Oh, crawl into Caleb, gross. Yes, this was all Charlotte Hale's master plan. The flies infect people with the parasite that lets her control them with the tower. This new park is just a cover to start infecting people. It's ground zero of a worldwide mind control outbreak. But Maeve still has her superpower to hack any tech around her, so she overloads the tower, blows the thing up and they capture Charlotte Hale. But as they're escaping, her enforcer, the man in black, is here to stop them. Maeve fights him while Caleb calls the maneuver, but now Charlotte Hale's like, hey Caleb, aren't you feeling a little mind controlled? Yes, yeah, she's gonna have him shoot his friend Maeve, but Caleb fights it. Oh, shoots William instead. It's like, what? How'd you break free? And he's like, I don't know. I just don't like following orders. William doesn't stay down though, so to buy time for Caleb to escape, Maeve hugs him real tight and blows up the explosives. But now while Caleb's waiting for his ride, Charlotte Hale's like, so do you remember what happened next? Wait, what? Yeah, it turns out his men didn't show up. Charlotte Hale's men showed up and killed Caleb. That's right, this is not now. It's part of the interview to establish fidelity. This Caleb has been brought back in a robot body and we're another 20 years in the future where Charlotte Hale has won the whole of humanity under her control. It's now apparent this future is where Christina Dolores is living. And it's also when Bernard woke up. This cool rebel chick is Caleb's grown up daughter, Frankie, and the super weapon they're searching for is Maeve. So the robot uprising is complete. Charlotte Hale has made a paradise world for the hosts by turning all of human civilization into reverse Westworld parks. It's been fun, but she's kind of bored of it now. She's got a new plan for transcendence, where they're going to leave behind these human-like bodies and evolve to their full potential. Right now, though, she's dealing with a big new problem. See, there have always been outliers, like Caleb, who the mind control doesn't work on. They make it a game where they send hosts to hunt them down, but lately, any host who talks to an outlier goes crazy and kills themselves. So for this latest outlier, her right-hand man, Robo Williams, going to take care of it personally. But the human resistance is here, too. Whenever someone wakes up, they go into 
try to save him. Yes, it's just like the Matrix, but not virtual. The man in black gets to her first, but he hesitates, decides to let her talk, and now he's thinking about the nature of reality. So the humans bust in and save her. Mission success. As for Christina Dolores, she's on another date, but she drops her lipstick and oh, someone's picking it up. It is Teddy. <laughs> yeah, he's back. But he's not just here for romance, he's here to help wake her up, fills her in that she's not like normal people, and helps her realize she can control people around her. Soon she discovers she's not writing for a video game, she is writing the stories of the people in the real world. So Hale brought back Caleb to figure out why mind control doesn't work on the outliers, but he doesn't know, and if he did, he wouldn't tell her. She's like, hey, that's fine, one of you will tell me eventually. Yeah, she's brought back a bunch of Caleb's. And remember, putting a true human mind in a robot body doesn't work, they always break down. So this latest Caleb has an epic escape attempt where he finds the other Caleb's that didn't make it as far, but this one was waiting for him here, like, hey man, use me to break your fall. So this Caleb's made it farther than ever, finds a radio, and reaches out on the frequency to his daughter. I love you, baby, I'm so proud of you, I know you're gonna win. Of course, this whole escape was Charlotte Hale's plan too, to see what he would do if he escaped, and she's like, wow, you just radioed your daughter to say I love you? This was a waste of time. So Hale brings back one final Caleb, but she doesn't care about outliers anymore. She's done with humanity. She's gonna shut down all the parks and do forced transcendence for all hosts. William, though, is not interested in transcendence. He likes his fleshy body and hanging around messing with humans. Especially since he talked to the outlier, he's having a crisis of who am I, so he goes to talk to his human self. Hey, human me, what would you do? And it's like, hey, I'd burn this whole thing to the ground. Yeah, you know what? You're right. So he finally kills human William. Now, Frankie and Bernard are trying to bring Maeve back online, but when a rebel friends get there, she shoots Bernard like, yeah, man, I figured out you're a robot. I can't trust you. But Bernard's like, hey, me and Stubbs are good robots, but one of your rebel friends has been replaced by a bad robot. And pretty soon she figures out which one. They're having a fight, but then Maeve is awake and takes this guy out. It's like, well, that's been a good nap, darling, but time to save the world again. First, Bernard takes Maeve to the Hoover Dam, which has been turned into a massive self-sustaining server room. Yes, this is where Charlotte Hale sent the Sublime. Remember, Bernard's the only one with the key to it, so he unlocks it. They'll need that later. Then they head to the tower for the final showdown between Maeve and Charlotte Hale. Let every everyone be free? No, they don't deserve to be free. While they're fighting, Bernard sneaks up to the control room to leave a cryptic video message. This was the only way. Meanwhile, Christina Dolores quits her job, which causes enough distraction for Stubbs and Frankie to get in there and rescue robot Caleb. Yes, father-daughter reunited. But now Maven Hale's epic fight is rudely interrupted by the man in black. But he's not here to save Hale. He quits his job too and shoots her. He goes to the control room and kills Bernard too, then gives the tower its final command. Everyone kill each other in a massive battle royale. His philosophy is like, this whole world sucks, let's just burn it all down. So Charlotte Hale's Paradise Sims game has been replaced by William's Fortnite. Charlotte's not done yet though, he missed her memory core, so she puts herself in a new metal robot body and is ready for battle. He destroyed the tower though, so she can't override his last command, but she finds Bernard's video message. He's like, hey, I know you wanted to make a good world, but you made a bad one and it's gonna end now. But there's one hope for the future, it is Christina Dolores. Turns out she's not really here with a body, she is just plugged in to the computer monitoring it. She's now completing her journey of self-discovery. Turns out she led herself down the maze to self-awareness. So now Charlotte grabs her pearl, flies over to the Hoover Dam. She's gonna put her in the sublime. But William got here first. He's gonna delete the sublime to destroy everything and they have their final shootout. Meanwhile, back in the city, Frankie, Caleb, and Stubbs are trying to escape. They're interrupted by Clementine who kills Stubbs now. Then Frankie kills Clementine too. Yes, everyone dies in this finale. Robot Caleb gets his daughter to the escape boat, but it's like, I can't come with you, baby, cause my body's all falling apart, I'm a robot. So they have their tearful farewell, but Frankie's gonna be okay. Back at the dam, William's winning, but Bernard knew all this would happen, and he planted a gun there for Charlotte Hale to now grab and take him out. So evil Dolores Charlotte Hale saves the sublime and puts good Dolores in there. She really thought she was doing the right thing, creating a perfect world by enslaving humanity, but now she understands that didn't work, and so she deletes herself. And so as season four comes to an end, life on Earth is truly going extinct. But the hope for the future rests in the sublime, where good Dolores is hanging out with Teddy and admits that he's not the real Teddy, he's just her imaginary friend. But he He's like, I don't care, baby, I love ya. The real me is theoretically in here somewhere, so you can meet up and we'll be together then. But Dolores, who was plugged into the whole world, has memories of all of humanity and could recreate them digitally. She knows humans can be evil, but they can also be good, and it's her whole thing, I choose to see the beauty in this world. So she says it's time for one more game, one final chance for humanity and hosts to live together and not destroy each other. And she's gonna run the simulation in Digital Westworld. Yes, back to the park, the best place to be, I guess, to find out who you really are inside, and that's where Westworld Season 4 comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.